Rav Cook Selected Letters Chapter 3 The topic is Torah versus Other Religions The Preface to Letter 11 In an essay, Derech HaTechia, Rav Cook had written that the founder of Christianity possessed personal power and spiritual flow. This remark won harsh responses from many quarters. Rav Cook defends himself by noting that Jewish scholars have never belittled the strength of great evildoers, but have rather sought to explain how greatness, when improperly used, becomes corruption. By the grace of God, the holy city of Jaffa may be built and established 19th of Av 5671. That's the 13th of August 1911. Letter 11. By the grace of God, the holy city of Jaffa may be built and established 19th of Av 5671. Peace and blessings from the Holy Land. My close friend, the Rav and Nagid, Nagid is an honoured person, usually a wealthy man, who is precious in Torah and in the reverence of God, Rav Dov Milstein. May his light shine. First I, first I will inquire of your well-being with great love. Your precious letter reached me, and I was delighted with your dear words and faithful friendship. You will, with the help of God, receive the Etrogim. Etrogim are the citrons used in the service of Sukkot and the Feast of Tabernacles in Sukkot. May you celebrate and rejoice in happiness, rejoicing in the Lord by fulfilling the commandment in the prescribed manner, with the fruit of the desirable land. With regard to your question concerning what I wrote in the journal Hanir about that man, the footnote is a rabbinic custom based on Exodus 23.13, is to refrain from mentioning the name Jesus. So that man, where I stated that he had awesome personal power and spiritual flow, some people were surprised and became suspicious of me, as if I, heaven forbid, came to praise that Jewish apostate who was deified by the Gentiles. You should know, my friend, that this is not so. Anyone who reads my in-depth article in the careful manner which befits such important subjects could not possibly think that it contains any kind of commendation. For these were my words. The essence of personal power and spiritual flow is a natural force, which depends on its proper preparation. If it is prepared so as to be made right by the loftiest holiness, it becomes elevated. But if one leaves it alone and devotes himself to it it as it is, it will cause him to fall to the depths of pagan filth. Those who tasted of the tree of life, the footnote is, uh, the tree of life is a reference to Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism. This may be a more specific allusion to Rav Chaim Vital's book on Kabbalah entitled The Tree of Life. Back to the letter. Those who tasted of the tree of life know and recognize that this is the secret of the innerness and outerness. For when the innerness gives life, gives life the outerness, it, the outerness, becomes holy. But when the outerness turns away from receiving from the innerness, everything returns to tohu and to impurity. A footnote. In the Lurianic Kabbalah, the term Tohu denotes the world that was initially emanated and led to the breaking of the vessels. According to this central Kabbalistic concept, the emanated world first took the form of essences, lights and vessels that were to manifest it. However, because of a lack of integration between lights and vessels, the vessels broke and the initial world never achieved crystallization. Some of the shards of the broken vessels being misshapen through an elaborate detailed process formed the realm of evil and imprisoned some of the sparks of of the lights within them. These sparks animate the realm of evil and give it life. The term tohu thus connotes a lack of integration between innerness, lights and outerness vessels which forms the basis of evil. Back to the letter. And I explain the root of the impurity of the above-mentioned Jewish apostate and the source of his power. It stemmed from the power of Tohu, to which he was drawn and pulled into the deep abyss of pagan filth, particularly those Jews who followed him. And in these times, due to our great sins, there is much missionary incitement to leave the community of Israel, and therefore I consider it a sacred obligation to explain these matters. And this has always been the way of Jewish scholars, not to belittle the personal value of great evildoers, but to show their great strength and to explain that despite all their greatness, they became corrupt when they sank into their own impurity. And thus it is said of Balaam, 
there has never arisen a prophet as great as Moshe in Israel, but among the other nations there has, and he is Bilam. This is from Bamidbar Rabbah, 1434. This means that Balaam had greatness, but it was evil and inverted. My statements brought forth complaints only from the shallow-minded. But true scholars who are great in Torah and know something of the secrets of the Lord discern, thank God, the true value and benefit of my aforementioned words. These words are indeed of the world's hidden mysteries, and I only allowed myself to reveal them because it was a time to act on behalf of the Lord. Footnote, this is from the Psalms 119-126. It is a time to act on behalf of the Lord. They have invalidated your Torah. The traditional understanding of this is that sometimes in times of crisis, the breaking of the law is the true realization of the Torah. For example, the Talmud uses the injunction to explain how the oral law, the emission on Talmud, came to be recorded, even though an injunction forbade its being written. This prohibition intended to, pres to preserve the original form of the oral law. However, when it became apparent that many laws were being lost, through forgetfulness, mistakes, etc., the sages realized that the Torah's true purpose would be best served by recording them. See Gittin 60a. And the needs of the time demanded it. I'll read that sentence again. These words are indeed of the world's hidden mysteries, and I only allowed myself to reveal them because it was a time to act on behalf of the Lord, and the needs of the time demanded it. Greater and better men than I have suffered people slander because of similar matters, when their pure souls compelled them, for the sake of the betterment of their generation, to speak new words and to reveal hidden matters to which the common intellect is, is unaccustomed. Consequently, there were many complaints against them until their righteousness came forth like lightning. This is from Zechariah 9.11. And holiness was vindicated. That's from Daniel 8.14. If time allowed, it would be proper to greatly elaborate on these exalted matters, but for now the preceding short comment will have to suffice. May those who judge me favourably be judged favourably favorably by heaven. This is from Yoma 23a. Concerning your behaviour towards your sons, may they live long. I am very glad that you are listening to my advice and adopting the virtue of loving kindness, the virtue of Abraham our father, and the virtue of peace, the virtue of Aharon the priest. May their memories protect us and all of Israel. Amen. I hope that with the help of God, as a result of this closeness, your words, which come from the heart, will influence them at last. Whatever they actively realize will be a great accomplishment, and whatever remains concealed in their hearts will, with the help of God, bear fruit in the future. In the days that are coming for the good. For, though, for who can measure the light and holiness hidden in the soul of every Jew? Ultimately, everything will happen for the good and... The strayed and the expelled shall come and worship the Lord on the holy mount in Jerusalem. This is a paraphrase of Isaiah 27.13. And the Lord will be seen upon them, and suddenly all the good treasures of all the good points of influence, which anyone has had upon his friend and every father has had upon his son, will be revealed for fame and praise and eternal splendor. And I have already said numerous times that it is especially this generation which seems so empty and heedless of the law that is most ripe for the light of a true return of love and sacred strength when, with the help of God, the time comes. Therefore we must draw everybody close with bonds of love and kindness and adopt this good way of the Lord with all our strength and not be impressed by all those who want to strengthen the side of rigor, din. Footnote, this is a reference to din. Literally, law or justice, the virtue of rigorous enforcement of the law. It is contrasted with the virtue of chesed, loving kindness. Even if they are righteous and great Torah scholars. Because in our generation, in the, I'm sorry, back in the text. I'll reread that last sentence. Therefore we must draw everybody close with bonds of love and kindness and adopt this good way of the Lord with all our strength and not be impressed. Impressed by all those who want to strengthen the side of rigor, din, even if they are righteous and great Torah scholars. Because in our generation, in the time of the revealed end, the footnote, this is a reference to the statement of Rav Abba in Sanhedrin 98a, the sign of the imminent redemption is the realization of the following verse. 
Ezekiel 13, 6, 8. But you, O mountain of Israel, shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they will soon be coming. Rashi explains that when the land of Israel becomes very fertile, this is the clearest sign that the advent of the Messiah is near. Back to the text. Because in our generation, in the time of the, of the revealed end, the morning light of Abraham shines. A footnote, the Bible states that Abraham went early in the morning when he was commanded to sacrifice his son Isaac in Genesis 19.27. According to Jewish mysticism, the morning light of Abraham is the virtue of chesed, loving kindness, Tikkun Ezohar, Tikkun 22. The morning here is the time of redemption after the long, dark night of the exile. Because in our generation, in the time of the revealed end, the morning light of Abraham shines, bringing the Redeemer to his children's children for the sake of God's name in love. This is from the first blessing of the 18 benedictions. In the text, and it is an obligation and a commandment for wholehearted believers in the Jewish faith to expand the idea and concept of the holy task of illuminating kindness and love upon all that is called Jewish, and to bear this in mind when concentrating on prayer and the performance of the commandments, then God's light will appear to the righteous, in accordance with the state of each person's soul, and in the way of Sugula, in a transcendental manner. Some of the holy light and pleasantness of the Lord will shine on all those who have strayed. As the prophet says, In distant places they shall remember me, they shall save their children, and return. This is from Zechariah 10.9. Your close friend, who inquires after your well-being with great love, as befits your honoured soul. Humbly yours, Avraham Yitzchak Hakohen Cook, Igrot 375.